following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Welcome to another edition of our program, CHW In Action. As always, CHW stands for Community Health Worker, and In Action because I'm always in action to bring the, to bring the community of Nashua healthy education and interesting and role mo good role models such as my guest here today. My name is Rafael Calderon. I'm your host for the day. Thank you for your, for your time. Now I'd like to introduce you to Amber. Amber is a community leader. I have seen her all over the place in Nashua, and I never knew what she did. I just knew that she was a leader. But today I have the privilege of having you on my show, so please let us welcome Amber. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's an honor. No, the honor is all mine. <laughs> so I, I know most people probably know who you are, but tell us for the audience who you are and what you're about. Sure. Um, so I'm involved. Um, I moved back to Nashua just about three years ago. Um, mm -hmm. And so since then, I did grow up here, moved away for a little while, came back. Mm -hmm. So since then, I've become very involved with primarily downtown, but Nashua as a whole as well. Mm -hmm. um, I currently run um, the fastest growing privately held company in New Hampshire. Congratulations. Um, thank you. We are located right in downtown Nashua, so mm -hmm. it's great to be in the center of it all. I also am an advisory board member to Positive Street Art. Um, also assist with the Honduras outreach team. Um, I mentor a little girl named Samantha. Nice. Um, part of an amazing group of women that we finished up a eight-week program mentoring at Girls Inc. We're about to start another one um, involved with YouGo and all these other different things that are going on downtown. Very nice. Where do you draw your passion from? Um, my passion really is... Um, it's in seeing the empowerment of others or seeing other people being able to open their mind and continue to open it and to see that they can do whatever it is that they thought they wouldn't be able to. Um, and so that is what keeps me pushing all the time through everything that I do is, is isn't the question, um, the question is why can't I? You know, why can't I do that? Or why can't so-and-so do that? Or why can't we? And so that's my underlying passion all the time. Very nice. <laughs> you see, and that's why I wanted to have you in the show, because you, ha it, you have that energy that glows from you, mm -hmm. okay? Powerful energy, confidence in it, confident energy. And wherever I go, I see you in events. Mm -hmm. So now I, know what, now I know what you do. So you look like a, you have a very healthy mentality, mm -hmm. healthy way of looking at life. And that's what we want in Nashua. We want a healthy Nashua. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little, a little bit about the state of health of Nashua from, up, from your point of view. Okay. How do you see Nashua? Um, I see it as it's really just in the past three years it's changed. Mm -hmm. You know, it was doing it was doing well, and then um, I feel like it, it crumbled a little bit. Mm -hmm. And now it's right at the point again of why can't we? And mm -hmm. why can't we have a performing arts center? Why can't we all get together and work towards the same common goal? So um, people are starting to to see that we can be that great city, quote unquote, again, um, mm -hmm. or the best place to live again. Mm -hmm. So um, it's going to take a little bit of work. You know, it's um, a lot more, a lot more is just people coming together and seeing that, you know, there's no separation of you or I or anybody else. We're all, we all have the same goal. Right. And to be able to see that and to work towards things that are really meaningful, not just for ourselves now, but for the next, you know, 50, 100 years is really mm -hmm. what it's going to take. And I think we've just started taking those steps in the right direction. I'm happy to see that. Yeah. And I thank you for your work in doing that, in making sure. that happen. Okay. So in order to have an open mind, a healthy mind, then we need to live in a, a healthy, ideal lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about that? A healthy, so a healthy lifestyle obviously means so many different things. Mm -hmm. um, and I have to tell you, my eating habits are not healthy whatsoever. Like, mm -hmm. I eat french fries all the time. Um, but for me, the, where it all starts from is your mindset. You okay. know? And if you have a healthy mind, then it's just, it radiates through everything that you do. 
in your interactions with others and how you perceive others and your conversations and your passion and what you do. Um, because, you know, if, you, if you're not in the right state of mind, it affects everything, right? right? Every single thing that you do, how you breathe, how you eat, how you sleep, how you drive, how you work. Mm -hmm. So to have a healthy mindset is the most important thing that you can, that you can do for yourself and for others. Okay. That brings me to the question of mm -hmm. how did you, where did you get this from? Because before we started rolling the tape, mm -hmm. as they say, we were talking about little girls, young girls, mm -hmm. drawing from the, let's say, the examples of their parents. Mm -hmm. And they grow up with a certain perception of how life is. Yeah. So for you, yeah, you look like such a powerful, independent lady. Okay. Tell us your story. How did you get that way? So um, I can't ever say that there was a moment that I wasn't. Um, I didn't have a choice when, um, like we were talking about, you know, role models and, you know, I grew up with a single mother, mm -hmm. um, who she was an addict. She never worked. She had a lot of, um, struggles that she always had constantly. Um, and so from a very young age, I had to learn how to not only be able to take care of myself, but how to sometimes have to be the parent as well. So it, three years old, I learned how to make my own hot cocoa in the morning because that's wow. what I wanted. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was a lack of choice for me. Mm -hmm. um, I guess there was a choice. You know, obviously there always is. You can follow in the same path or take, take a different direction. Um, and for me, it was that I knew that there was something, something better. You know, there was this, um, I was so lucky to have great role models in my life, whether it's through family or through school, that I always kind of gave you just the tiny little brain bug to say, well, mm -hmm. what if you could be different? What if you could do better? Um, and so that's really what pulled me throughout everything. Um, and then when I was in high school, right before my senior year, my mom actually left. She moved away. Really? She said, goodbye. I'm leaving. So you so can come with me or not. Um, mm -hmm. And that was hard. That was really hard. That was the one time in my life I did not have a healthy mindset, you know, because mm -hmm. Here you are going into your senior year of high school. It's supposed to be this great thing, and I was abandoned. So for me, I leaned on my friends who were awesome. The school was really understanding and great. I have an amazing family that did take me in, an aunt and uncle. Um, but that's what really kind of started it. I had to rebuild and rebuild and rebuild. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just always that drive of, well, somebody once told me I couldn't do it. Why can't I do it? And so I kept pushing forward to do whatever it is that I wanted to do. So um, fast forward, here we are. And now I am the happiest I've ever been in my entire life. I'm contributing more to my surroundings, to my friends, to my family, to my community. Um, and, it, and it's meaningful. It really means something. Very nice. See, you inspire me. Just <laughs> to you. Wow. OK. So now you mentioned that. Uh, tell me more about your company before I go into anything mm -hmm. else. So um, we are the largest, fastest growing privately held company in New Hampshire. It's such an honor to get that um, award, not only just in growth, but we also received some other awards this year that were, mm -hmm. to me, even more meaningful than that. Like growth, great. You know, everybody wants to be, you know, to grow and grow profits. And, um, but we, we received an award from um, One Greater Nashua mm -hmm. for um, our inclusion and diversity in the workplace. Um, and so for us, in the biggest reason that we got this award was for um, our flexible work schedules so people can go back to school if they need to. Mm -hmm. um, and so we work with their schedules so that single parents, um, we encourage them to be involved in the community um, and whatever other things that they have that are going on. And I think really what it stems from is my belief that we don't make anything. You know, we're not a manufacturer. We don't physically put out this individual product. Mm -hmm. But what I do make and do have the opportunity to mold are people. Nice. And so for me, it's I want that these, my employees, whenever they go off to work somewhere else to take the next step in their career, that they see on there that these people worked at Excel Mobile, and they're mm -hmm. like, we need to hire that person because we know where they came from. Um, and so we really take mentorship and a healthy mind into, into that approach every single day and everything that we do. Very nice. Are you hiring? No, for me, no. I'm happy at my job. <laughs> In general, no. I'm so blessed to have the most <laughs> amazing staff right now. We are, mm -hmm. they're rock stars. Every single one of them, they come in every day and just give us, you know, give us their all and, and leave happy and go home to, you know, to, to live, 
to live their life. And so um, we're very lucky right now that we're not hiring. So. Well, I'm glad. Uh, yeah. Just to clarify, I love my job. <laughs> I'm asking because I know people that are looking for work. Okay? <laughs> but your company sounds so cool. It is. Okay? It is. It's and fun. tell us about your involvement with BSA mm -hmm. in Hat, Natural Hat. Okay, so Positive Street Art, for those who don't know, um, mm. is an urban arts, uh, a local national based urban arts uh, nonprofit. So mm. their purpose is to inspire passion for the urban arts um, through community workshops, dance programs, art, um, and really in events and to just bring the community together through, if we, if we would say, an ulterior view of what art may be. Okay. Um, so with that, we have programs f at the PAL Center, mm -hmm. and so we teach dance classes at the PAL Center to give them the, the opportunity to express themselves creatively um, in a way that's fun, you know. Mm -hmm. um, we also have events, um, several different events throughout the year, uh, open studio nights for people to come into our studio to draw, to paint, to do whatever they want. Um, the reason I got involved is because to me it was, it was the underdog. You know, mm -hmm. it was people see graffiti and they just turn their nose up at it. And I'm always interested in what people turn their nose up at. Okay. I'm like, that sounds good. That sounds like something that needs attention. And so, um, so for me, it was just, it was an awesome opportunity to be involved in something that, that needed the attention. And that was fun and different and unique. And that didn't have the alkalides, if you would, as let's say like, um, you know, a fine art gallery. Mm -hmm. It is fine art. It's just different. So. It is fun. I agree mm -hmm. with you. Uh, fun and fun. Mm -hmm. Fun right? and fun. Yep. <laughs> and how do you connect them that to hot to, to Nashua, Nashua Hot? hot. So yes. Nashua Hot um, is a branch off of um, kind of loosely connected to Positive Street Art in the mm -hmm. sense that Positive Street Art's um, vice president Tom Lopez is a part of both, and he has created with PSA's help. Um, I'm going to say this wrong, and you can correct me. Arte de Positivo. Arte Positivo. Yes. Close enough. <laughs> In Honduras, which uh -huh. is coming up. Um, their trip's coming up very soon. And for the first time, one of our dance instructors is actually going with them. Yes, D-Rock. D-Rock. And it's, he is so excited, and it's going to be so amazing to not only just, we bring art, and we, they do murals and, and community workshops, but now they're also going to have, add the dance addition onto it. So um, it'll be great for the community in Honduras, but I think more than anything, it's going to be really great for, for D-Rock to be able to bring that passion back. Sweet. So I've been helping them uh, with mm -hmm. fundraisers and, um, and different stuff like that. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice indeed. <laughs> okay. So you came back to Nashua. Yep. What brought you back to Nashua? Why not go to New York or to some other bigger city? Why come back to this lovely city of ours? So I was actually living in Las Vegas. I was there for nine years. Um, mm -hmm. And to me, when I, when I left here, when I moved from here to Las Vegas, I said repeatedly over and over, everybody said, why Las Vegas? I said, well, New Hampshire is the kind of place you would live forever or you move and come back. And I said mm -hmm. it like a robot. One day, it was... Here we are, like eight and a half years into it. And I started to say it to somebody, and I stopped myself. And I was like, it's time to go back. And, and that was it. I had family here, um, and this is home. And so I used to come back twice a year or as often as I could. And it, Nashville was always home, you know. And for me, it was, there wasn't another option. Um, it was the one place that I wanted to be and I needed to be. And so that was it. And got on a plane and came home. Wow. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. You do so many things. Yeah. And you also have a TV show here. Yes. At Access Nigeria. Yes, Tell us I, about told, that I forgot about that part. Oh, yeah. my gosh. So um, I'm a co-host for The Loft. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a, it's a talk show that is three women, um, all different backgrounds. And we like to share our opinions on different subjects, current events. But more than anything, what we really want to do is to be able to bridge the gap between whatever that gap may be. Mm -hmm. So... Um, it could be, let's say, um, you know, the working mom versus stay-at-home mom, or it could be, you know, somebody that wants to be healthy, but they don't know how to be. So we've had many different um, professionals come on and speak to what their own personal passions are. Mm -hmm. We've had a photographer come on nice. um, and give you some tips and tricks and different things, but more than anything, it's just to break down the barriers and misconceptions of what, what does it mean to have your portrait done. People think sometimes, well, it's only for special occasions. That's not true. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. You can always have your, your, you know, you can always use a, a photo and it's nice to have not just for yourself, but for your loved ones. Mm -hmm. um, we've had, um, i trying to think, we've had a medium on, um, we had a, an amazing speaker a couple weeks ago, um, Randy Pierce, okay. who, yeah, do you know Randy? I, th I yeah. know the name. <laughs> so he's an amazing motivational speaker and he has a, an, a great company here in Nashville as well. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, that's that's a little bit about our show. So, well, let me ask. Let's say I'm on your show, yeah, and I'm a person that wants to be healthy. Mm -hmm. What kind of tips do you give me? Um, so for me, going back to m my view of healthy and the mindset, um, mm -hmm. is really to take the time every single morning before you even get out of bed, before you open your eyes, um, and the same thing at every night before you fall asleep is to say things in your head aloud, write it down, whatever makes sense for you, what you're grateful for. Three things. Three things. It could be it could be something silly. It could be something deep and meaningful. Three things that you're grateful for every single day, um, and also what your intentions are for the day. So set your intentions before you even get out of bed, um, and then it it will shift your energy. It'll shift your mood for the whole day, and it'll give you the focus that you really need. And then at the end of the day, same thing. You say your three three things that you're grateful for during the day, um, and you can set your intentions for the next morning. Um, or reflect on the day and kind of think back to things that you would like to do better for the next day. Um, but more than anything, it's just really to stay positive and just realize that, you know, there isn't any separation between all of us. We're all here for the same reason. We all have hard days. We don't know what anybody else's story is. Mm -hmm. So just be kind, be nice, be understanding, and just stay positive about whatever it is that you're doing and, and be involved in other people's stories. I agree with everything that you're saying. <laughs> if I may ask, what are the three things that you say to yourself? Um, so we can do today. So mm -hmm. today, um, and I'm very lucky, I actually picked in a, my best friend is my one person that I, um, we hold each other responsible for it. So mm -hmm. every single day she's like, what are your three things today? Um, mm -hmm. And so today my intentions for the day were to be, um, to enjoy. Enjoy the moments, enjoy the smells, enjoy the texture, whatever it is that's going on around you, just enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, it was also to be calm because your stress affects everyone else around you. Indeed. Um, and the third thing was to really kick some butt at work. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> what goals do you have right now? What are you working on right now? Um, right now, I'm actually working on my own personal brand um, and website, which isn't even up yet. I, that's one thing. I don't know how to do. I don't know how to make a website, but I'm trying. Um, mm -hmm. So that's called Dharma Dare. Dharma Dare. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So Dharma is um, the Sanskrit word that on the word for universal truth. So it's a play in the, on, on truth or dare. Um, mm -hmm. And basically, it's about self-enlightenment um, and really just understanding what your purpose is and who you are and what makes you tick, what makes you happy, and you know what keeps you up at night, and just really enjoying mm -hmm. that journey. Um, that's one thing I'm really working on right now. Um, besides that, I'm doing uh, some guest speaking for goal setting, um, goal setting mastermind dinners. Um, mm -hmm. And really just survive the winter. It's not my friend. It's not your uh, friend. No, it's hard. It's hard. Mm -hmm. I love the sun. I love feeling the sun on my skin and the warmth. So, um, so those are my three goals right now. Very nice. <laughs> you know, uh, one of my goals is to create this new uh, sort of like mentorship program mm -hmm. for young kids, finding role models like yourself mm -hmm. for little girls in your case or little boys. Mm -hmm. Are you doing something like that with? Touched a little bit on it before we came mm -hmm. live, but yep. can, you, can we talk about that? So again? I have um, an amazing support group of women that um, I think there's eight of us that we all get together, and we help mo motivate each other all the time. So one thing I always recommend to everybody is, you know, find your find your tribe, find mm -hmm. your tribe of people that inspire you and pull them in. It could be any random person. Have the courage to call and say hi. You know, mm -hmm. I would like for you to be within my you know circle. Um, but the group of us, we just finished up the mentorship program with Girls Inc. Mm -hmm. It was an eight-week program. They called it Women Wednesday. Um, Women Wednesday. Women Wednesday. Okay. It was so much fun. Uh, mm -hmm. We got to share with the girls our stories and a little bit about ourselves and our journeys and how not everybody's journey is exactly the same. So one of the little off subject, but one of my biggest, um, I guess you could say, qualms with the with the school system now is they're mm -hmm. cramming down 
everybody's throat. You have to go to college. You have to go to college. You have to go to college. It's not for everybody. And it's not for everybody. And so sometimes that's really, that's hard. That's a hard choice because if you're hearing that all the time, you mm -hmm. think, if I don't do that, I have no other choice. So they think that now I have to go, let's say, work um, work at a fast food or I can go to college. Those are my two choices. But there's mm. so many more. And so that was the point of our of our program was to tell them that we all have different paths in, in where we get to where we go. The point is just don't give up, keep going. Um, okay. And so we are open to doing different um, different programs. Um, so we should talk more about that. So. We, sh we should. Because mm -hmm. I want to ask you, see, as a community health worker, what I do is sort of like build a bridge mm -hmm. between the community and the community health center yeah. and make people healthier. And as you mentioned before, not just not to keep people from getting sick, yeah. but also from ha having them have a healthy lifestyle, yeah. what I call an ideal lifestyle. Mm -hmm. okay? So how can I help you as a community health worker to accomplish the goals that you're pursuing? Um, I think really it's um, the opportunity to be able to get the story told. Mm -hmm. So um, I was corrected recently by one of my business mentors. Mm -hmm. Um, she's like, you need to tell your story. And I said, I don't. It's not unique. It's not different. She goes, but it is. Yes, it is. And more than anything, it's, it's, the, um, it's the unpolished stone. It's still mm. a beautiful diamond, and it's unpolished. And people can relate to the unpolished part. So they need to know what that part is. Because otherwise, you're just looking at a diamond. You're like, oh, whatever. It's just a diamond. Mm -hmm. But to be able to understand the process and how it got to where it is, is it's the journey. And so to be able to share the journey with others, to give them that opportunity to hold on to and say, wow, I too can do that, mm -hmm. um, is really what, what makes my heart sing. So to be able to have the speaking opportunities to meet, um, to meet young girls, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or in a class setting or whatever it may be. See, so like I told you, I'm working on this uh, project. Mm -hmm. you, you'll be my guest. Okay. You can speak up my program. Sounds good. See, because I think we're all diamonds, diamonds in the rough. Yes. And when we see a diamond like you that's shining, and we see, okay, if she was once rough, mm -hmm. and now she's shining, and I'm, I feel that I'm rough, if it, even if I'm not, because it's all about perception. Yeah. Then maybe by just listening to her, she may motivate me. I'm thinking like, you know, kids out there. Yeah. So I think it'd be a perfect for model for any kid. Thank you. For young boy, really. Because your story is really good, I'm telling you. I used to work with women. There was a program called uh, called uh, Circles, mm -hmm. and it was about help. You yes. know about it? I just learned. She's coming to. Um, I actually have a speaking uh, engagement tomorrow, and their one of their members was coming to hear. Really? <laughs> yeah. She's coming to your show. Mm -hmm. um, she's coming to a dinner. To a dinner. Ooh. Yeah. See, I eventually want to have him here in this show. Because ah. you help people. I mean, the Circles program is it's, life is a circle. It's mm -hmm. always going around. Yeah. What happens today is going to happen tomorrow. So if we learn how to do better today, tomorrow won't be so hard because we already know. And to have people that have done that, that have learned that, I think that's a benefit. Absolutely. So you mentioned also earlier that you see Nashua at that, you know, that stage of, of what, why can't, why can't, yeah. why can't we? Yep. Okay. What do you see it is within Nashua that can help us come back to be, you know, to adopt that why can't we attitude? Why do we love Nashua? I can tell you why I love it. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure the audience is more interested in why you love it. So... I don't know if it's true for everybody, but mm. my experience with all of the people that I have come, come to know over the past three years, they're just mm. all so inclusive. Um, and really that's what I love the most about the city and mainly Positive Street Art and the different organizations that I'm a part of is they're very inclusive and they see the opportunity to help you come out of your shell or help mm -hmm. you learn something new or discover who you are. Um, and they do it in such an encouraging way that it's, it's really incredible and it breaks down all those barriers, your own personal barriers, the hardest ones to break down. And mm -hmm. they're able to do that just by, by creating the opportunity. And it's not just with that. I've seen it in so many of the small businesses you walk into, anywhere on Main Street you can walk into, mm -hmm. and immediately your family. You know, they know, mm -hmm. they know your name, they ask about your, everything that's going on in your life, and they remember and they care and they take the time, and they you know, take you through everything. Um, and the same thing with a lot of the different um, aldermen that I've met. It's they're just everybody is just very inclusive. And so I think 
that ripple effect will naturally um, you know, make it a lot better and make it a greater city. But with organizations like One Greater Nashua and the United mm -hmm. Way um, and the Endowment for Health and really getting everybody together to, to make sure that everybody else that feels like they're not included, mm -hmm. they need to know that they are. And so to continue to do events and outreach and programs to let them know that, hey, we're all in the same boat together and we are here and we do mm -hmm. want you to be a part of it, that's what's really going to, to lift up the entire city. See, I agree. I see, I agree. <laughs> My question is, well, how can I help? You know, I'm always asking, yeah. what can I do to make that happen? Yeah, it's just, mm -hmm. um, I think there's so many really incredible organizations that we have that it's just to get them, just to get the word out there, get the message out there. Because a lot of people are too, um, they got their blinders on. They're going through their day and they just know the big names, you know. Mm -hmm. um, they know Red, you know Red Cross, they know this, they know that. And that's great, we need those. But it's the smaller organizations that are actually have their boots on the ground here in Nashua that need that support. So to be able to get the word out there and just have people be become aware of who they are and what they do and what their purpose is is really what's needed. Then I will continue to do my best to get yes. the word out there. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Just keep doing what you're okay. doing. You're doing great. All right. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. So then coming to the close of the program, mm -hmm. what message would you like to send to the community of Nashua? Ah, my message to the community is... Um, is to really just dream big. And then once you do, dream even bigger because we are our own limitations. We are our own roadblocks. And our greatest fear isn't in failing. Our greatest fear is, um, I can't remember the poem exactly, but um, our greatest fear is really knowing that we are so powerful and we are so capable. And mm -hmm. so once we start to take those tiny steps in that direction and you are your truest self, then you know, everything else is unstoppable, so. That is beautiful. <laughs> you know what I think I heard that too? In that movie, uh, Coach Carter, what is your deepest fear? Yeah. At the end of the day, your deepest fear is that you're you, you, you're so bright mm -hmm. that you sort of like diminish yourself to be able to fit yes. in with others. Yes, yes. You know? And don't, and um, I've been called out on it so many times, stop being small. Because when you're small, you're only giving others permission to also be small. Mm -hmm. So be big. Tell your accomplishments. Be proud of them. Yell them from the rooftop. It gives other people the opportunity to be inspired and to know that they also can be big. Well, Amber, you inspired me. Thank, thank you. you for being on the show. Same, okay. My pleasure. My pleasure. And thank you for being with us. We appreciate your time with us. As you can see, this lady is a role model. This lady is a real cool lady in Nashua. So again, I'm privileged to have a, a special guest, a privilege to be able to send a message and to provide the audience with someone to look up to. Uh, so thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Please continue to watch the show. We'll continue to bring you health education, not just from the aspect of not getting sick, but also from living a healthy lifestyle. Because in order to have a productive and happy lifestyle, we have to be healthy. And health comes in many ways. So again, thank you. Have a good night. God bless you.
preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.